What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and we're here with week 9 of the Pokemon Premier League. And this week's team analysis is going up against the Parasect Germain, who are coached by Shroom Raver, who actually still has the best record in the league. He's only lost one battle thus far. He lost that battle to the Norwich Skitty, which interestingly, the uh, Eternity Enders managed to triumph over. So, going into this, we are coming off of a very uh, nice victory over uh, last week's battle, but when he's only lost one battle, we cannot have big heads about it. We have to definitely take that as a real threat. Uh, sorry if my voice is weird. I am sick when I'm recording this. We're supposed to battle later today. Don't know if that's going to happen or not, because uh, I keep feeling worse and worse. But I wanted to make sure this is done, just in case we do battle today, because that's what we plan for. Now, his team. Victini Empoleon, Chestnut Umbreon, Miss Magius Thunderous Incarnate Form, Tyrantrum, Sandslash, Polyrath, Scyther, and Mega Audino. We have yet another person that has access to 11 different Pokemon. That of course means once again that he's not going to bring 5 of these. Yeah, I think the first, the, the main issue here is just determining which 5 he's not going to bring so we can more aptly discern the best things that we need to bring. Now, unfortunately for us, with our team, there are just some Pokemon that are bad against several of his Pokemon, so I don't like their matchup overall. Uh, those Pokemon include Tyranitar. Uh, Tyranitar has generally a bad matchup here because he has so many ways to stop it. Between um, Victini can get fighting coverage, and Polion gets water coverage, and also steel coverage. Chestnut gets grass and fighting. Um, I can actually probably hit it pretty hard with moves from Tyranitar, I can hit Chestnut with fire type moves, but I'd rather not sit in there with Spiky Shield or Leech Seed. Uh, Umbreon, Miss Magius, those are two Pokemon that Tyranitar doesn't really mind facing, uh, but then you run into Thunderous, Incarnate, Sandslash, Tyranitar, Polyrath, Scyther, and Big Audino, and they all would love to face Tyranitar. So we probably will not be bringing Tyranitar this week. That being said, without Tyranitar, Stoutland is kind of suspect to bring, and um, Stoutland, I really, I do like his neutral coverage against this team. Uh, he even gets super power for Empoleon and for Tyrantrum and Crunch for things like Ms. Magius. But even with that Sandrush ability, he can just have Thunderous and paralyze it, so Stoutland may not even be the best Pokemon for that task. Now, I really like Cofagrigus for this matchup. Uh, he has nothing to get rid of Toxic Spikes except for spinning them away with his Sand Slash, and I would love to Toxic Sand Slash. All said, he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Pokemon affected by the Toxic Spikes. Uh, and even getting up one layer is really good against this team, even if I can't afford to get up two. So Co Toxic Spikes, Cofagrigus will probably be making uh, some sort of display here. The Pokemon that he has that aren't affected by Toxic Spikes, which are Empoleon and uh, Scyther, and to a lesser extent, Miss Magius and Thunderous, they don't really enjoy being burned because it whittles them down. They normally like to run things like Life Orb on the more offensive Pokemon. So when you counter again, burn and Life Orb, that can be really, really nice. Plus, Miss Magius likes to run things like Substitute, or as I've seen him run, uh, Miss Magius also likes to use Parasong and Beanlook. So if it's getting whittled down by burn, it doesn't really enjoy that either. Now he does have a few Pokemon that can set up, so I will probably run Haze on Cofagrigus. Other than that though, the standard um, Shadow Ball, maybe Hex, something like that. And Knock Off is nice here too. Uh, with Florgis, Florgis is fantastic here. He does not have anything to really hit it strongly besides Empoleon. He can run poison or steel type coverage on several Pokemon such as Thunderous, uh, Chestnut, um, Tyrantrum, or Scyther. But those that the coverage that they get isn't enough to do a KO it usually. That being said, uh, I don't really want to bring in Forges to try to set up. If I bring Forges, it's most likely going to be the Calm Mind Synthesis variant, especially since I'm not going to use Tyranitar. I don't want to set up until something like Thunderous is gone. Otherwise, it can kind of just come in and Thunderwave me and taunt me and all this other annoying stuff. Uh, also, Tyrantrum needs to be worn down some. 
Uh, if he has an offensive Tyrantrum and I have no speed on my floor, this Tyrantrum will outspeed. And a banded head smash would really, really hurt. Don't really want to have Forge just take that type of attack. That being said, I can one hit KO Tyrantrum with basically no offensive investment on Forge, so that's kind of nice. Uh, Toxic Croak is another Pokemon that gets pretty good coverage here. Uh, Sucker Punch is very nice for something like Victini and Miss Magius and even Thunderous, especially if I'm behind a substitute. I'll have to decide if I want to run Substitute or Swords Dance because I really need Gunk Shot, Drain Punch, and uh, Sucker Punch. Uh, Gunk Shot is just great in neutral coverage against a lot of his Pokemon. It gives me a secondary way to check the Mega Audit out in case he tries to set up with it. Uh, and also, Gunk Shot just hits Chestnut incredibly hard. Now, the bad thing is, is the accuracy, which we have run into missing Gunk Shot before, but that's just a risk that we'll have to take. Um, I could also run Ice Punch on my uh, Toxicroak, just hit Tyrantrum, Sand Slash, Scyther, and Chestnut, but uh, generally that's inferior than just going for a Stab, Gunk Shot, but I don't have to worry about the accuracy, so I'll need to run some Calcs there to see if that's worth running. Uh, Reuniclus is another Pokemon that I really like in this matchup. Um, Reuniclus and Kabutops, actually. Uh, Garchomp is a given. Garchomp outspeeds almost his entire team, naturally, uh, with notes on Scyther and Thunderous and Miss Magius. Uh, he has to run a, Vict a Scarf Victini to outspeed my Garchomp. And if he doesn't, then I can just get to Earthquake or Dragon Claw, so many of his Pokemon. Uh, the only real reason to run Fire Blast on Garchomp is for the Chestnut, because Chestnut's regular defense is so high. Uh, but outside of that, uh, I I really would just like to run some type of Steel or Poison coverage for Audino. Now with Reuniclus, it's, it's a little bit tough as to what I want to run here. That one week where I ran the Call My Reuniclus alongside Call My Forges, that worked out really well. And that looks like it'll work out decently here too. Uh, Reuniclus has a little bit more trouble setting up here because Reuniclus has to deal with the possible poly, uh, excuse me, the possible Scyther. And it can't really take the hits from uh, Tyrantrum the same way that Floor just can. Also, Miss Maggie is an Umbreon, can take hits and retaliate back with stab, ghost type attacks. Uh, so that's a little bit annoying. It might be worth looking into Trick Room here just because his team is above average in speed. And if I have Reuniclus, Cofagrigus and Florges, I can have some type of Trick Room shenanigans there that might be interesting. Uh, unfortunately, Focus Blast, Psy Shock, Shadow Ball seems to be the best coverage that I can really go for here. As Psy Shock 2 hit kills everything on his team that he might switch in, and that which isn't 2 hit KO'd, such as Umbreon or uh, Thunderous or the Audino, they don't like taking coverage from necessarily. So, something worth looking at. Uh, with um, Kabutops, I really like Kabutops here just for a check for Victini. Aqua Jet just smacks Victini in the face, and there's not much Victini can do about it. Uh, that doesn't really help that Kabutops is a little bit of dead weight against the rest of the team. Uh, the rock coverage is nice against Thunderous, but again, I don't really want to get hit by a priority Thunder Wave. And there's no real way for Kabutops to outspeed Thunderous outside of a Choice Scarf. Uh, also, Polyrap is a complete dead stop to Kabutops, which I really don't like. I don't like it when a Pokemon can just switch it, and there's basically nothing I can do to it. So, and I'm pretty sure he's going to bring Polyrap. I've seen him bring it uh, Salt Vested before, and Polyrap is a pretty cool water type with the water fighting type coverage, so I, I definitely have to watch out for that. Now, as far as what he's going to bring, I definitely expect him to have Victini. Victini and Mega Auto, no, maybe a Scarf Victini. Uh, I don't think he's going to expect, me, I don't think he will believe me to bring um, anything like Kabutops and Sand Rush Stalin, but he does still have to deal with the standard Mega Law Putty, which I will most likely be bringing. And of course, VTD does outspeed that to a degree. Um, with Mega Audino, I do think he'd bring a defensive one that might be able to set up here, but since I have Toxic Croak, he might just have it for a team support type Pokemon. Uh, just passing it around wishes and heal bell and that type of thing uh, because it's very likely that i would bring uh toxic spikes here heal bell auto could be very very annoying um, besides those two thunderous incarnate form would be 
he, I, I just don't see him not bringing that. It gets fantastic neutral coverage against my team with the, with electric type attacks. And if Garchomp switches in, he can hit it with the hidden power ice. So he will most likely be bringing that. And he can even bring it mixed with uh, moves to hit my Florges or um, moves to, to do a little bit more damage to something like Reuniclus. Uh, so he has a couple options there. Priority Thunder Whip is very, very annoying, so I might have to throw some Wild Berries around. Uh, so that's three Pokemon I expected to bring. Uh, I also expect Sand Slash. Sand Slash not only would pick up Sand Rush from my own Tyranitar, which could be very annoying, but he can also spin everything away if I try to set up anything. Um, Sand Slash's ability to hit a lot of my team with Earthquake, also relatively annoying. Uh, actually pretty effective here because I have so many grounded members. It's a good thing he doesn't have too many Pokemon that can use spikes. Speaking of spikes, I do expect it to bring Chestnut. Um, just because of Chestnut's ability to, to whittle some Pokemon down with Leech Seed. I I think in another league I encountered a Belly Drum Chestnut. I don't see him bringing anything like that. Um, but it does give him a little bit of a core that's weak to poison if he has Chestnut and Mega Audino. So I would be perfectly fine with him doing that. Now inside of those Pokemon, it's kind of a toss up in the last slot there. He has enough bulk between Chestnut and Mega Audino. But he might also decide to load that up with Napoleon or Embryon, um, which is why uh, Toxicroak is so important. Uh, Chestnut and Napoleon both struggle to really hit Toxicroak, and um, even if Chestnut carries a coverage move, it won't one hit KO just because uh, it'll probably be a defensive variant of Chestnut. Um, and Polyon can't use its main move Scald on Toxicroak without recovering Toxicroak's HP. And so that leaves a bit for using the uh, the, the neutral attack fo flash cannon, which just isn't going to do that much. Uh, Empoleon can learn Earthquake, um, and of course so can Chestnut. But with that not being their, their, their main means of attacking, if he has that, that just gives me an opportunity to set up a bulk up again. If I decide to use that Toxicroak, hopefully I won't get crit again. Uh, it gives me a little bit more wiggle room if he tries to go for a coverage move. So, Victini, Chestnut, Thunderous, Mega Audino, and Sand Slash, and then maybe one of those other defensive options. I don't see him bringing Tyrantrum. Uh, I just have quite a few ways of dealing with Tyrantrum. Uh, if he did bring it, I would expect it to be either the Rock Polish or Dragon Dance variant, because after a plus one or plus two, he can outspeed a lot of my team. Uh, but I do think he'll be scarfing Victini. I don't think we'll see Scyther either, this matchup. Uh, I think it's actually second in kills tied with Victini for him. But Scyther just uh, overall struggles against a lot of my Pokemon, um, including Florges and Cofagrigus. And losing its ability, Technician is not going to be good for it at all. So I don't necessarily think he'll bring that. Um, he might bring Polyrath. Polyrath checks some of my Pokemon pretty decently. Um, it can't do much to Florges, and it can't really do much to Reuniclus. So he's got to expect me to bring those, so he might not bring that either. So it'll be interesting to see what he brings here. I think we can win if I just set up Toxic Spikes and whittle his team down and keep my uh, Law Putty and my floor just very, very healthy until they have an opportunity to set up. Uh, it'll also be important to kind of play around possible Haxi options. I need to keep as few of my Pokemon paralyzed as I possibly can. I will have aromatherapy on Florges, but again, I don't want to switch to it unless I have to. So just staying away from paralysis is going to be pretty important. So I think that the Eternity City Eaters will have an opportunity to pick up a pretty big win here if we're able to win. Um, I still think he's at the top of the table so far. So if we can win here, that'll be a pretty important win. And we'll have to go from there. But I hope you guys enjoyed the battle whenever I get a chance to have it here. Hopefully I'm a little bit healthier when I have it. And in the meantime, have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.